I know, natagalan yung ating full review ng iPhone 14 Pro Max and the iPhone 14, but I swear, it will be worth it. Hey guys, it's Ritak Girl Mary, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Finally, masusundan na rin natin yung first impressions and camera test na ginawa natin for the latest iPhone 14 Pros in Singapore. This time, I am shooting it here in the Philippines since yung review units na meron ako ngayon are from the official or one of the official retailers of Apple here in the Philippines, which is beyond the box. So to those who doesn't know yet at hindi naka-follow sa aking social media accounts, nagkaroon ng pre-order ang Beyond the Box from October 7 to 9. So yes, the time that you guys are watching this video, tapos na po yung kanilang pre-order period. Pre-ordering either from Digital Walker or Beyond the Box is indeed sulit for me since guaranteed yung mga freebies na makukuha natin sa kanila. It's almost worth 11,000 worth of freebies and yes, kahit anong iPhones yung bilhin nyo sa kanilang bagong 14 series ay makukuha nyo ito. So yes, congrats sa mga nakapag pre-order sa Beyond the Box or Digital Walker sa mga nagbabalak or planning in the future might as well grab the opportunity next year in case na magkaroon ulit sila ng pre-order. In front of me are all of the colors na pwede nyo mapagpilian sa iPhone 14 Pro and the Pro Max. We got here the iPhone 14 Pro in gold, the iPhone 14 Pro Max in silver, we got here the iPhone 14 Pro in space black, and of course, the iPhone 14 Pro in deep Purple. As much as I want to dig agad-agad sa ating review, meron naman tayong chapters guys sa baba. So if you guys want to skip it, pwedeng pwede naman. But for now, let's talk about first yung pricing ng mga bagong iPhone 14 Pro and the Pro Max. Okay, so I'm pretty sure most of you guys are checking yung official prices ng iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max sa Apple Store. Price starts at 70,990 pesos for the 128 gig and for the Pro variant. And when compared to the price that we have from Beyond the Box, price starts at 71,990 pesos for the same variant. Meron silang 1,000 pesos price difference. Honestly, medyo maraming factors kung bakit magkaiba yung naging price point nila. Pero based on my research, I really did try my best guys to check prices on other, of course, official retailers. Isa si Beyond the Box na may pinakamura kung ikukumpara natin ito sa Apple Store. They did not tell me to say this. I really am trying my best guys na makahanap din ng murang iPhone source para sa inyo, lalo na sa mga naghahanap ng NTC certified. Yun nga lang, ang pinagkaiba kasi when you order from Apple Store, medyo may katagalan lang. It takes around 3 to 4 weeks. Depende pa rin ito sa lagay ng panahon. Obviously, the fastest route to get your latest iPhones is to get it from our official retailers or sa gray market. Okay, so before we proceed sa ating dynamic island, dahil yun ang unang-una kong gustong pag-usapan bago yung kanyang cameras. So totoo lang, if I were to choose between these four colors that I have in front of me, I'll go for the space black. Probably the best color for me. Iba yung pagka-black natin ngayon kung ay kukumpara natin ito sa graphite colorway na meron tayo from the iPhone 13 Pro. The only problem that I see for the space black talaga is in the long run, medyo mas halata sa kanya yung pag-chip off nung kanyang kulay sa mga frames niya. Mas magiging obvious rin ito pag medyo mas tight yung cases na ilalagay niya sa kanya at paalis-alis kayo. Next is of course the deep purple. Maganda rin naman ito pero there's something about the blue color that we saw from the iPhone 13 Pro and even the Alpine Green na talaga namang mas nagustuhan ko yon compared to the purple that we have for this one. But then again, it still is an attractive colorway. Siguro iba-iba lang talaga tayo ng preference. Now, out of all the four colors that I have here, siguro yung pinakamadaling bilhin or yung pinakasimple pero alam niyo yun, reliable when it comes to cases is probably the silver. I have here the silver Pro Max again. 
And yes, when it comes to buying cases, mas magandang tignan sa puti, mas malinis, and kahit ano pang ilagay nyo sa kanya, mapa anong kulay man yan, or printed, or any textured case, it will still look good. For the gold naman, ganun pa rin yung kanyang pagka-gold, kung ikukumpara natin sa previous iPhone 13 Pro and the Pro Max. But yeah, it is still looking very elegant, pero kung naka-gold ka na previously at mag upgrade ka ngayon, Mas better if you will, you know, go for the other colors naman. Okay, so let's now talk about the design. We will be very quick lang since it's pretty much the same doon sa kanyang predecessor. And since I've been using the iPhone 14 Pro Max for quite some time na, my sentiments remain the same. It is a heavy device and mas mabigat siya compared to the iPhone 14 Plus that opts for an aluminum frame and is therefore lighter. But yeah, to most Pro Max users, it really is something you'll get used to over time. Yung position ng ating SIM tray remains the same. It's located below the volume rockers. And yes, all iPhones being sold by our official retailers here in the Philippines are dual SIM. Meaning, one eSIM and one physical SIM card. Now, except to those people who bought their iPhones in the US, wala na tayong physical SIM tray. But, if ever man nadadali nyo yung mga binili yung iPhones in the US here in the Philippines, Yes, pwede nyo pa rin magamit and there is still a way. So, I'll be linking down below yung a few articles I read regarding this. With the iPhone 14 Pro Max and even the iPhone 14 Pro, you really are getting Apple's premium material experience. Which means polished stainless steel frame, frosted the glass on the back and the front. And yup, yung front display natin is still protected by Apple's transparent ceramic shield. And now, since nasa display na rin naman tayo, pag-usapan natin yung pinaka-pinag-uusapan talaga na feature sa mga bagong pros ng iPhone. The Dynamic Island. Yung Dynamic Island na meron tayo sa mga bagong iPhones is something that people really did not expect during their Apple event, including me. The punch hole, yes, definitely. Alam ko talagang aalisan na nila yung notch this time. But I thought that was really it. Hindi ko alam na may integration ng software and whatnot. So what is Dynamic Island? It's a one pill shaped area that changes size and shape to accommodate various types of alerts, notifications, interactions, and turning it into a kind of front and center information hub like airdrop file transfers, AirPods connection status and battery life, Face ID unlocking, iPhone charging status, and the many more. Now, one of the popular questions I get asked regarding the Dynamic Island is, pwede daw ba silang mag-interact? Yes, it is very much possible to interact with certain types of content displayed in the Dynamic Island. So halimbawa, if it's showing something related to an application's background activity, pwede nyong itap yung Dynamic Island to switch straight into the associated application. So halimbawa, there is a media playing, you can also long press the Dynamic Island to bring up a widget containing playback controls. And yung pinaka, 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 <laughs> common question is, can we turn off the Dynamic Island? There's currently no way, guys, para ito ay um, disable. However, kung distracted kayo by its animations, you can dismiss them naman by swiping left or right across the Dynamic Island. Of course, without affecting any related background activity. Ire-return niya kayo sa original pill shape status niya. Ngayon, there are also a few issues that I've seen, especially on Twitter and Reddit, regarding their Dynamic Island. Especially no, during the last week of September to the first week of October. To the point that their Dynamic Island were wobbling. Or kaya naman yung Dynamic Island nila is going vertical. So yes, if you experience the same or kahit hindi the same pero nagkaroon ng issue or bug yung inyong bagong iPhone 14, let me know in the comment section below. Personally, I did not experience this, so I really am one of the few lucky ones. But then again, to those who are worried to get the new iPhones, don't worry, dahil may bagong dalawang updates ahong na-receive, and most of the people na nagreklamo were able to fix their problems by updating their devices. So I really am guessing it really is just an issue on their latest iOS 16. 
eh. So, camera review na. Alam kong talaga namang inaabang to ng ilan dahil most people talaga who are buying the latest iPhone really wants the best camera system for their everyday life. Upgrades from the iPhone 13 Pro to the iPhone 14 Pro may appeal talaga to most photographers, filmmakers, or even creative types of people on TikTok and even on YouTube. And this includes the updated camera hardware. From 12 megapixels, we now have a 48 megapixels. I just like to say, it doesn't mean that we have more megapixels. Doesn't necessarily mean we will get better photos. Again, this technique is called pixel binning, and it is used on many Android devices for the past years. So it is important to note, guys, that when taking photos by default, they are all in 12 megapixel images. So if you want to utilize the full 48 megapixel sensor, niya, and of course, medyo mas malaking file size nga lang ito, then you just have to tap the raw button on top of the camera app. You'll get greater flexibility when it comes to editing and you have more control over the saturation, contrast, brightness, and shadows. Eh ano naman itong tinatawag na photonic engine ng Apple? I did mention this on our camera test and let me explain it in layman's. Photonic engine guys, it really takes things further and it helps na mas ma-improve yung color accuracy and protect details. Tignan nyo na lang yung mga shots by the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It shows how the camera handles an everyday situation when things aren't bright and sunny. Okay, so when not using the Pro RAW setting, yung file size lang ng most shots or photos that I have ay at around 2 megabytes. And then, when taking photos in 48 megapixels, it goes up to 43 megabytes and up, depending on your shot. Now, let's talk about the night mode or the low light photography. Kung maaalala nyo, when the iPhone 11 series launched in 2019, it included night mode. Na kung saan it takes a series of images over a few seconds and combines them to create a photo that's brighter and has a better color. Three years later, may night mode pa rin tayo. Pero I do think it really improved a lot kung ikukumpara natin ito sa unang iPhone na meron ito. Most of the time, night mode in the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max needed just a couple of seconds to get a good photo in low light. In fairness, the iPhone 14 Pros did a solid job of capturing skin tones, especially at night. Now, according to Apple, doon sa kanilang Apple event, yung Ultra wide daw natin sa mga bagong iPhone 14 Pro got a new lens. Or should we say a new sensor? Na kung saan we get sharper ultra wide photos. The sensor combined with the photonic engine mas na improve guys yung image quality in less than ideal situations. Now, the telephoto camera that we have dito sa ating mga bagong iPhone 14 Pro is basically identical sa meron tayo sa iPhone 13 Pro, but it gets a lift from the 14 Pro's photonic engine. It now has a 3 times optical zoom, giving us more variety when taking everyday photos. And under good lighting, guys, telephoto camera takes good photos naman. Okay, so alam naman natin lahat na okay at maganda when it comes to optimization na ang cameras ng iPhones, even not the latest iPhone 14 Pro's. But kudos to Apple talaga for having the best video quality and performance above all. All the improvements sa cameras and processing guys makes the videos look even better. Isa pa, Apple now has a cinematic mode that can record 4K at 24 frames per second. And there is also a new stabilization mode called action mode. So every time guys na kayo ay magsushoot ng video, pwede nyong i-turn on and the phone crops in a bit to keep the image centered and yung horizon level niya. If you're shooting in 4K already, action mode will drop the resolution to 2.8K. Pero yung results, definitely impressive pa rin naman. Though other phones like S22 Ultra have similar stabilization functions, it is wonderful to see the tool come to the iPhone even if it is a bit late. Hindi lang yun, hindi lang sa main camera nag-work ang action mode, pero sa tatlo pa niyang cameras. Okay, taking selfies. Isa to sa paborito kong gawin sa pagre-review ng mga smartphones. Siyempre, kung madalas natin gamitan ng rear camera, mas madalas naman ang selfie camera. The True Depth camera, guys, got an upgraded lens with a brighter f1.9 aperture. 
meron na rin pang autofocus yung ating selfie camera for the first time ever on an iPhone. I know, I will not praise Apple for this. They really are late to the game. But in fairness naman, iPhones rendered selfies so much better. And mas better yung definition and mas lighter yung touch sa kanya with the way it handles skin tones. Kaya naman, whenever we upload um, selfies on social media, talaga namang napakaganda pa rin yung tignan. Okay, pag-usapan natin yung kanyang display. I know na pag-usapan natin yung Dynamic Island earlier, but then medyo cool lang ito. Syempre, it's not really all about just that. Apple introduced the promotion with iPhone 13 and Pro Max, wherein the screen refresh rate goes up to 120Hz. Ngayon guys, ang iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Pro offer an even wider adaptive refresh rate range. It can go from 1 to 120Hz. Yung 1Hz refresh rate guys, it is reserved for the new always on display mode. Yes, that's right. Sa mga hindi masyadong alam ang mga nangyayari, may always on display na po tayo sa mga bagong Pro ng Apple. So instead of having a black and white screen, katulad ng nakikita natin sa mga Android devices, dinidrain ng Apple guys yung brightness and color and the leaves visible information like date, time, focus mode, widget details, and photos you might have as your lock screen. It will also show media that you're playing, like for example, nagpapatagto kayo sa Spotify, it will remain there. Sa totoo lang, hindi ako fan ng always on display na meron tayo sa Apple ngayon. I mean, yes, I did wait for Apple to adapt the always on display that we see on Android devices. But then again, sometimes kasi guys, parang masyadong maraming nangyayari. I don't need the full wallpaper and widgets and album most of the time. Though, in fairness, it is a very efficient at 1 hertz. It doesn't eat that much battery. At least 1 to 2% power lang per hour kapag ito ay naka-off screen. Although, syempre, it still adds up. Pero additional 1 to 2 hours lang naman yung nakukuha ko every time that I turn off the always on display. So yes, yung mileage nyo when it comes to battery life still depends on what you do and what else you turn off. But definitely, I did notice na mas masarap gamitin outdoor yung Pro Max because of the battery life nga. The only problem probably that I have is charging. Well, according to Apple, you can get 50% off battery charge in just 30 minutes but in my case we were only able to get around 40 percent of battery charge in 30 minutes of course this is using the official apple 20 watts power brick okay so before we totally end this review alam kong napakahaba lang video natin pero if you reach this part congrats at mag comment kayo sa baba kung nandito na kayo Dahil malapit naman na tayo matapos. There are two things that is also new sa mga bagong iPhone 14. And that is SOS Emergency via Satellite and the Crash Detection. The iPhone will use an array of sensors and algorithms para madetect when you've been in a car accident and will contact emergency services if you are unresponsive. Similar thing that I did discuss at the Apple Watch Series 8 review. But then, since medyo na late yung ating review, Medyo, of course, nakaabot tayo doon sa recent rumors. Actually, it's not a rumor but more of a news. So yes, totoong nangyari ito. Those people who rode the roller coaster did contact the emergency, guys. Dahil akala nga may crash na nangyari. But honestly, at the end of the day, I still find myself liking, guys, yung mga new features ng iOS 16 kaysa dito sa crash detection. So yes, if you have the recent iPhones naman like the 12 Pro Max or even the 13 Pro Max, you can probably skip the iPhone 14 Pro and even the Pro Max since upgrading to the new iOS 16 um, software will make you feel like your iPhone is brand new. Totoo to, because that's how I felt when I updated my iPhone 13 Pro in the beta version before. Ngayon, ang tanong, ano ba dapat ang bilhin namin, Mary? Is it the Pro Max or the Pro? Honestly, it all boils down to two factors. Una-una, how big is your hand? Pangalawa, how big is your wallet? Siyempre, kung katulad ko kayo na only little phones can fit their small hands, then the Pro Max is definitely not for you. Isa pa, malaki rin ang matitipid nyo if you will get the Nan Max version. But then again, most people kasi prefer a bigger battery life and a bigger display size. So again, 
to each their own. So yes, based on the videos that you guys are seeing, it may seem like a perfect phone, but there are a few letdowns na na-experience ko. Not much improvement on parts that are typical iPhones are good at. Halimbawa na lang battery efficiency. Again, when it comes to this category, I am a bit disappointed. And of course, I do think Dynamic Island needs more third-party support talaga. Now, when it comes to 48 megapixels photos, they are nice to be honest. But then you'll have to experience slow shutter, you give up your live photo, and it will really take up your storage very quickly. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, maraming salamat guys for watching and sa mga nakarating sa dulo ng video natin, congrats! Okay, so to those who reach the end of this video, napakaswerte niya because you'll get a chance to win the Momax QMag Power Magnetic Wireless Battery Pack and of course, the Urban Ears earphones. Sa mga naka-iPhone 12 pataas, talaga namang may enjoy nyo to, especially this magnetic power bank. Kung hindi man naka-iPhone 12 yung mananalo, okay lang, you can definitely sell it or give it to someone you know na mayroong iPhone. So yeah, all you need to do is subscribe to this YouTube channel and share this video on Facebook and must be in public. And just use the hashtag MaryXiPhone14 Pro. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, it's your tech girl Mary and see you in our next video. Bye guys!